Uh, I'm not sure who chose that video, but it was sure appropriate with all the snow coming down there, whatever. <laughs> it's great joy able to be here this morning and to share with you. And uh, last night I was praying and saying, God, I hope we don't have too much snow. I hope we don't have too much snow. Actually, I should be praying that the roads were clear rather than how much snow that we got. But thank you for coming here today. We're here, you know, and I want to welcome you to West Lansing Church of Christ. And we're continuing a series on Come and See. And so this morning, I want to focus a little bit, but I want to make you think first, okay? I want to make you think. Look at this picture behind me here. Now, what do these things have in common? What does a light bulb, a battery, a dollar bill, a minivan, and I guess my body all have in common? Now, just take a moment, think about it. What do they have in common? I think if you're a... If you're a science teacher, you may have a, a little bit of understanding here. But uh, I, I, someone said to me, I know the letter B, light bulb battery, your body. Well, it doesn't work for a van, okay, so that's not it. So what do they have in common? Source of energy. What's that? Power. Nah. Here's what they have in common. They all deteriorate. A light bulb burns out. A battery runs out. A dollar barrel wears out. A van, a minivan, at least mine used to, rusts out. And unfortunately, the, my body gets older, believe it or not. It gets older and it wears out, doesn't it? See, it's called the second law of thermodynamics. It all, everything deteriorates. Everything that's been created deteriorates in, in what we know about. And we spend so much of our time providing preparing for, mourning, trying to work it out, trying to make things last just as long as they can, but it doesn't, doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It burns out. It wears out. <laughs> it rusts out. <laughs> and I guess you can say it ages out as well. But there's one thing in the universe that doesn't deteriorate, and that's our God. That's our faithful God, our faithful creator, you know, and so we want to talk this morning about God's faithfulness. You know, last week we talked about how we need to take and realize that God's presence is on us. And we talked about God's goodness. And last week we talked about God's holiness, that God's holiness rests on us. Today, I want you to grab a hold of the idea that God's faithfulness rests on you. And what that really means. So as we walk through our daily life, yes, God's holiness is there. And that changes how we think and our values, how we live. But also God's faithfulness rests upon us. And it makes a difference in how we view life and the things that we do. Have you ever felt stressed? <laughs> you ever felt overburdened? You ever felt like your illness just continued to last or, or one thing after another or one thing after another keeps coming at you and maybe it's a disability or maybe it's a financial issue or maybe it's just a, a, a cancer that just won't leave. You ever felt maybe in a relationship that there's heartache after heartache. You ever felt that way? Sure, I'm sure we all have. But what we have to remember during all those times that God is faithful God will never leave us and he'll never forsake us. Turn with me in your Bibles to, to Lamentations. That's a small book there in the Old Testament. Lamentations, it was written by Jeremiah. We know Jeremiah was being the weeping prophet. But what you have to understand about Jeremiah is the fact that Jeremiah he never lost sight of God's faithfulness. Whether it was emotionally or physically or psychologically, he was going through a difficult time. And he was spiritually down, emotionally down, sometimes like we feel. But he never lost sight of God's faithfulness. I'm going to pick up here in verse 16. Verse 16. Now, I want to give you verse 16 in the literal translation. And Jeremiah says this. He, or God, breaketh with gravel my teeth. He had covered me with ashes. Now, if you want to look at that in a, in, a, in a more modern translation, my life is like chewing gravel. I never felt like that. And that, he, and that I rolling in the dust. And in verse 17, he says, my peace has been stripped away. And I have forgotten what prosperity is. The thought of my suffering and my homelessness is bitter beyond words. I will never forget this awful time. I will grieve over my loss. Ever felt that way in life? 
just seemed like when you take one step forward, it just seemed like you're knocked back two or three steps. And it's difficult and, and there's heartache. It just seemed like that some of, some of the things we struggle with, it just doesn't end. But he doesn't stop there. Jeremiah comes full circle. Look at the next verse, verse 21. He says, yet, yet I will dare to hope when I remember this. The faithful love of our Lord never ends. His mercy never ceases. Great is his faithfulness. His mercy began afresh every morning. I say to myself, the Lord is my inheritance. Therefore, I will hope in him. Jeremiah's thought went all the way around, and he realized that his, God's faithfulness never ends. It is God's faithfulness. God resting upon me, his presence on me, is my inheritance. Inheritance is something that we carry forward, something we look forward to grabbing onto, that we put on, that we move into life. He says here, the Lord is my inheritance. Therefore, I will hope in him. I believe that in us to continue in joy and peace as we struggle through life is trusting in a God who is always faithful. We may not feel it. We may think it not true. But God is faithful 100% of the time. God never burns out. God never wears out. God never runs out. God does not deteriorate. I want to go back and read that, that section again in Lamentations and maybe in a more modern translation. In verse 22, it says, Because of the Lord's great love, you are not consumed, for his compassion never fails. They are new every morning. Great is his faithfulness. See, God's faithfulness offers hope for us, for hope for every person in different areas of our life. No matter how bad it is, no matter how much stress we may feel, how much difficulty things we may face, whatever problems it may be, whether it's financial problems, physical problems, maybe it's a problems in relationship, maybe it's a problem that you want to be married, or maybe it's a problem you wish you weren't married, you know? Whatever issues are there, whatever pain that you're in, God remains faithful to you. A scripture that's given me comfort the last couple, couple months is from Psalm 145. Psalm 145, verses 14 and 16. The Lord is faithful to all his promises and loving toward all that he has made. The Lord upholds all those who fall and lifts up all who are bowed down. I'm so thankful God's not like us. Oh, sometimes I'm so unfaithful. <laughs> sometimes I'm so forgetful. You know, I forget to hang up my clothes. I forget to cut vegetables like I'm supposed to. Sometimes I forget to put gas in the car. Have any of you parents or grandparents ever forgot to pick up a grandson or granddaughter at, a, at an event? Yeah, see, we're all forgetful. And, and, and we're all not faithful necessarily in the task that's set before us. But we have to realize that God is faithful. He will never, ever, ever, he will never forsake you. Every promise he has made, for sure you can hold on to and keep it. And you know what my problem is? I want God to solve it now. I want God to take care of it now. When God says, I want you to wait, let me work. My faithfulness is true. Let me bring you through. There's a scripture that uh, I've really held on to just in the last couple of weeks, the last really month of my life, as I think about my life changing and things being different and moving in a different direction. And, you know, and I, I take in this scripture and I have, it, I have it put on my desk in my office. And I even had it on a kitchen table. My wife thought it important just to stick it right under my placemat so I could see it you know, as I eat. And, and the scripture is found in Psalm 32. Verses 8 and 9. Now, sometimes I read these scriptures through in, in, in different translations. And, and this translation in, uh, is called the, the uh, Passion Translation. And it just spoke to my heart. It says, I hear the Lord saying, I will stay close to you in instructing and guiding you along the pathway for your life. I will advise you along the way and lead you forth with my eyes as your guide. 
So don't make it difficult. Don't be stubborn when I take you to where you have not been before. Don't let me tug you along and pull you along. Just come with me. See, God's faithfulness is true. And God desires to take us in our life and move us in the path of life. He instructs us and he guides us. And he has his eye there upon us. And he says, Be, let me take you to places you've never been. Stop fighting. Realize that the things you're going through, I know about. And I've got a plan. So don't let me drag you. Just, just come along. God's word is true regardless of what the world may say or regardless of how my life may look, regardless of what I may think. He keeps his promises. God is faithful and his faithfulness doesn't depend upon my emotions. His faithfulness doesn't depend upon my events that happen in my life. Apart from God, everything deteriorates. So your success, your hope for the future your, your idea of what has to happen for things to work out in your life does not come about by your faithfulness. It comes about by His faithfulness. Our striving, our fighting doesn't produce what we desire. God just says, rely on my faithfulness. Trust in me and wait upon me. Remember, God's presence is on you. You carry his goodness. You carry his holiness. You carry his faithfulness on you. Your faith will grow not by striving, but by surrender. Oh, you may want to write that down. I hear anybody say amen to that. Your faith grows not by striving, but by you surrendering to him. You know, I love hearing the testimonies of people like last week when Carrie was sharing the testimony about God's faithfulness and selling a house and moving and different things. What a blessing it was to hear about the, the testimony. And just last night was a group of young people talking about the testimony of God bringing healing into people's lives and God bringing deliverance in people's lives. And man, it was just a joyous time, the sharing of testimonies. You love to hear those things because see, it comes down to that God desires to move in us and to move in us as a body in ways that go beyond our expectation. This morning, I'm going to talk about the ways that God reveals his faithfulness to us. I want you to understand that God shows his faithfulness to you when you're weak. God shows his faithfulness to you when you're tempted. God shows his faithfulness to you even when you sin. And God shows his faithfulness to us even when we fail. It's interesting when we think about being weak. You know, there's so many things in our own body. As we get older, we realize we can't do the things we used to do. <laughs> you know, and so we feel weak in that. Sometimes we, we feel weak physically. Sometimes we feel weak mentally. And sometimes we even feel weak spiritually. I, I don't know what Paul's problem was here in Corinthians. You know, we talked about the thorn in the flesh. I don't know what his problem was physically, emotionally, spiritually. We're not sure. And maybe that's good because then we just can't c compare and say, well, God. But, he, but we know this. We know that God is strong when we are weak. We know that God desires to help us and he's faithful even through the weaknesses that we have in our body, emotionally, spiritually, or even physically. Paul says here in 2 Corinthians 12, 9, he says, my grace, God's saying to Paul, my grace is sufficient for you, for power is perfected in weakness. God's grace is all I need. God's grace and his power works, <laughs> it works best in my weakness. And then he goes on to verse 10, he says, therefore, I will boast, Paul says, all the more. Gladly in my weakness. I never thought about that. Boasting of my weakness. Why? So that Christ's power may rest on me. That's why for Christ's sake, Paul says, I delight in my weakness. In insults and in hardships and persecutions and in difficulties. For Paul says, when I am weak, then he is strong. What's remarkable is the idea 
that God handles my weakness. He handles my life problems. And he brings about his good. Sometimes we just really say, it's really hard for us to handle these different things. And so sometimes we want to say, well, I've got to do it myself. I've got to be strong. I've got to make it happen. I've got to deny my weakness, deny these different things. He says, no, no. The idea of your weakness, the point of admitting weakness is not wallowing in defeat, but allowing God's strength to be displayed in you. It's okay to acknowledge our weakness that we deteriorate, that we have struggle, that we have, we have deformities, that we have difficulties, illness. It's okay not to wallow in defeat, but to allow God's strength to be displayed in us. We can look at the different things that we, we struggle with, whether it's our jobs or whether it's financial things or whether it's our country or whether, you know, maybe we're desperate and we want to throw up our hands and say, God, I just can't take it anymore. God, I just don't know exactly what to do. We have to realize that God desires to come into that situation and to bring about His power and His glory. And then what happens is then we look at you and we look at what has happened to you and how God has come and His power has been displayed in you. And we say, you know what? We know you couldn't do it on your own. We know it wasn't you. But it was the power of God working in you and through you in the weakness that you have. Our God, our God is faithful. He reveals his strength to you and I when we're weak. Our God also reveals his strength to us when we're tempted. I, I have something up here that I, I want to share with you. And I want you to know that I want you to know that um, temptation is not sin. This is some chocolate cake here. Oh, yeah, somebody took a bite out of it already. But here's some chocolate cake. Now, let me just say this. Let's just pretend that I'm on a diet. And God has said, look, I want you to be disciplined. I don't want you to, take, I don't want you to have any of that cake. I want you to leave the cake alone. Well, you know what happens? I'll tell you what. Mmm, that cake smells good. <laughs> it looked good. Matter of fact, there's even a fork up here. And, and so my mind just keeps thinking about this, about this cake. I want to eat it. I want to have it. But I'm going to walk away from it. But every time I walk away from it, I'm still thinking, I've got to have the cake. I've got to have the cake. I mean, that cake is right there. It's chocolate. Oh, chocolate. I love that kind of cake. You know what that's called? It's called temptation. And temptation is not sin. I could be tempted in that way, and that's okay. That's not, that's not sin. We have to realize this, that it's not sin to be tempted. And I use this idea of chocolate cake because it's a non-emotional, it's not threatening. But maybe instead of chocolate cake, you're here this morning and your chocolate cake, your temptation is pornography. Maybe your temptation is unforgiveness. Maybe your temptation is pride. Maybe your temptation is speaking lies to make yourself feel better or look better in the eyes of I don't know what your temptation is. See, we all have a chocolate cake. We all have those things that tempt us. But we are not to be defeated through temptation. For God is faithful to us. 1 Corinthians 10, 13, he says, the temptation in your life is no different than what others experience. And God is faithful. He will not allow temptation to be more than you can stand. For when you're tempted, he will show you that you can endure. He's faithful to show you a way of escape. So when I'm tempted to eat this cake, he says he'll provide a way of escape. He'll provide a way for me. You know, say, so, you know what? I want to say, oh, God, I just want to eat it. I just want to, I do. I just want to eat this thing. But he says he'll provide a way of escape. Maybe you need to take your cell phone and turn it off at night. Maybe you need the computer into the main room. Maybe you need to, to do something different and ask a person for forgiveness. May, whatever it is, God provides that way of escape, but you have to take that. You have to experience it and take that way out. Every single time, God provides a way of escape because he's faithful and he shows it to us. 
But you know what happens sometimes? <laughs> I can't take it anymore. Oh, hmm. Sorry, Sydney, this is really good. You know. And so what do we do? We partake of the sin, and we do it. And then we feel bad. Oh, God, I sinned. Oh, God, it's like putting a bag over my head. Uh, I just feel like a, a shame that I've taken it, and I've eaten it, and I've done it. And, and when I do it, you know, I, I didn't even enjoy it because of the guilt and shame that's there. But God's faithfulness is even there when I sin. First John chapter nine, chapter one, verse nine. God continues his faithfulness when we sin. He says, but if we confess our sin, if I just come to him and I say, God, you're right, I agree with you, and I repent. And it says, if we confess our sin to him, he is faithful just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So I agree with God. I confess my sin. He's faithful and just, and he does two things. He forgives me of my sin, and then he cleanses me from all unrighteousness. Yeah. He's there when I'm weak, and he's there when I'm tempted, and even when I sin, he is still there. What a wonderful God that we have and his faithfulness toward us. And you can say, well, I don't feel forgiven. It's not about feelings. It's about his truth of his word being correct. It's, not, it's about his faithfulness. But then you know what happens sometimes. <laughs> I come back. <laughs> I come back to, to having more. Mm. I come back. And I continue to in, into the sin. And I say, God, I'm really sorry. God, please forgive me. God, God forgive me. And, and, then, and, then, and, and I'm okay for a day. Then I come back. And I come back for more. And I say, God, I, I'm really sorry. Please, please, please forgive me. And I come back for more. And I say, God, I'm really sorry. This time I mean it. I'm setting my face against it. I'm not going to do it anymore. And then two days later, I come back for more. Even when we fail and have that habit of sinning, God is still faithful. 2 Timothy 2.13 says, If we are unfaithful, he remains faithful. He cannot deny who he is. But you know, God, I, I'm sorry. I just can't do it anymore. I've shamed you. I've shamed the people. I've shamed the church. I've shamed myself. I, I just want to quit. Here, here's my jersey, my team jersey. Here's my hat. God, I'm just done. He says, no, wait a minute. You don't understand. On my team, God says, you may be unfaithful, but I will never be unfaithful to you. He will never let you go. Man, I say, man, man, what a God that we have. Even though that I have taken those things, he says, it is my faithfulness that you can stand in and you can rest in because I will never, ever leave you. I will always be there for you to come to me, and I will restore you. Okay. That's a good sermon. That's a good cake, too. <laughs> but what do I do next? How do I handle the next thing? I have to understand that the faithful love of the Lord never ends. That's what he says in Lamentations. His mercy never ceases. Great is his faithfulness. His mercy begins fresh every morning. 2 Thessalonians 3.3, 3, the Lord is faithful who will establish you and guard you from the evil one. So what do I do? Let me just give you some ideas and some thoughts to order to help you take the next step in God's faithfulness. The first thing we do understand is put your past behind. Put your past behind. Draw a, 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 a line in the sand and say, no more. My past is gone. It is done. It's been taken care of by his faithfulness. I, I've been forgiven whether I feel it or not. Put the past behind and realize God's faithfulness is for today. It's for right now. The past has been taken care of. The second thing is take your present problems and pain, and failures, and just lay it before the Lord. 
Take what you're facing right now. The problems, the pain, the fails, and just lay it before the Lord. Now see, here, here's what you and I do. We say, wait a minute, I'm going to make myself a little bit better. I, I'm going to overcome a couple of these things and make myself better. Then I'm going to come to the Lord. And he says, no. He says, no, I want you to come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden. He says, I will give you rest. You just come as you are. You just come with that pain, that problem, that failure, and you lay it before him because he is faithful. So you're going to put the past behind. And you're going to take what's present there and lay it before him. And then you're going to hope in the future that God has for you in his faithfulness. You put your hope in the one who doesn't deteriorate. You put your hope in the, wasn't burn, the, the one that doesn't burn out or run out or, or, or age out. You put your faith and hope into him. Because you see, God created you for a loving relationship. And your sin separated that. So he came to earth as a man in Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us, and he gave of himself his blood in order for you to have payment for your sins. And then he rose from the grave, conquering all things so you can have life with God and that relationship restored. But then he didn't leave us alone. He gave us his presence to walk with us each day. And finally, hey, why don't you share God's faithfulness with somebody? Maybe share God's faithfulness daily with some people. Maybe share God's faithfulness with your children or your grandchildren. You know, Psalm, Psalm 89, 1 says, I will sing of the Lord's great love forever with my mouth. I will make known your faithfulness to all generations. It's okay to let our children and our grandchildren know about God's faithfulness. It's okay to let them know a little bit about things that we struggle with. Now, God has been good to us and what God has done for us. It's okay to let them understand not just the pain that we, but the joy that we have in God's faithfulness. So this morning, our challenge is to understand God's faithfulness when we put our past behind. And we take what's presently and we, that's struggling, we give it to the Lord, knowing that the hope that we have in His faithfulness will never end. And then as God brings victories and joys to us, we can share that with many people. Today, I want to do something very special and very different. Because I believe this. I believe that we need to take a step in God's faithfulness as a church. And so this morning, I want to remind you as a body to honor our church leaders and to honor our staff. And part of God's faithfulness is knowing and trusting that God is using the church leaders of this body and using our staff to move us on into the future. See, God is faithful. Now, these people haven't been prepared for this, but I want the elders to come on up front here. And I want all the staff members to come up front. So that means that means you, uh, Elena and, and, and Vicki and, and Denise and Kevin and Joel. Come on up here. You don't have to listen to me next week, but now you do. So come on up here. You see, these people have been given a signed task. And they've been given a ministry to perform. And God is using them in faithfulness to us. And so we need to honor them. And as we honor them, that means that we walk alongside them. That means that we encourage them. That means that we bring them before the Lord, trusting that God's faithfulness works through them. And so I'm going to ask you, just if you would just stand with me right now. We're going to pray for these people. If you want to come up, put your hand on them, you can. If you just want to raise your hands this way. But we're going to pray for them this morning. All right. Father, we thank you for your faithfulness. And Father, we trust that you use these people here this morning to lead us in your faithfulness and your vision. And Father, we thank you for these people. We, Father, thank you for the ministry and the, and the assignment that you've given them to move within this body, to lead us. Father, they lead by your strength, by your power. And Father, may we come alongside them to do your work, to do your will, and to, Father, do it your way. Thank you, Father, for the future you have for us as a body. And we thank you for this, these staff and these leaders and for their families. Oh, God, we ask you to help us to honor them, to stand beside them, to 
pray for them and to submit as you lead through them. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Yeah, thank you. If you just sit down for a minute because I'm not done. I got four more minutes here. There's other group of people that God uses to bring about his faithfulness to this body. And those are his volunteers, those people that serve. So if you're a greeter, if you're involved in missions, I want you to stand. If you're a greeter, if you're involved in missions, if you're on the worship team, if you're a teacher, come on. If you're a teacher, if you work, if you serve the church in any way, just stand up. Please stand up. Okay? You know, yes. Okay. Your children's ministry, missions ministry. Yes. These people are important. You see, God uses these volunteers. I see some volunteers in the back that aren't standing. I see. There. Okay. We got, the, we got the people in the booth. There's only two of you. There's three up there. Come on. One more. You see, these people have assigned tasks. And they have a ministry that God uses here in his faithfulness to this body. And so I just want you to push, uh, you know, you know we'll put your hands out. We got some people in the nursery that are serving right now. We have some people that are out there in the children's ministry and, and, and those that are behind the scenes. Where it's, we're just going to pray for you and thank you as volunteers. Thank you as servants of the Lord. Heavenly Father, thank you for these people. Thank you, Father, for working through them and making this ministry your ministry. Father, ministering our children and our missions and our music and our worship and our finances. Thank you for these volunteers. Oh, Lord, we ask you to help us to honor them in the assigned tasks you've given to them. And Father, may love abound with us all. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much. Let me just share one other scripture to you. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 2 through 3. Paul says this. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. So that's why we want to recognize these people and realize that God uses these people that we, and entrust them. We need to trust them to bring about God's faithfulness to us all. Some people have asked me, well, Ron, what are you going to start doing? Are you going to be here on Sunday mornings? I, I, I probably won't be here on Sunday mornings. I don't want to interfere with the leadership and the new people God's bringing. But I do want to tell you that I'm not going to be that far away. Matter of fact, I'll be working with a group called the Jesus Movement Church. Our purpose will be a, as an outreach. Is it an outreach? Yes. Is it a gathering? Yes. Is it, it's, a, it's an opportunity for us to reach out beyond the walls of churches and to touch people that are broken, to touch people that need to be healed, touch people that need to be delivered, people that won't come into a church building, but they need the special touch of God in their life. They need the blood of Jesus to cover over their sins, and they need the Holy Spirit to be present in their life. And so I won't be that far away. Matter of fact, if you know where the, the uh, Elmwood Plaza is, that's where uh, I want to say an office is going to be. But that's, it's more a place of teaching, more a place of encouragement, more a place of worship. And, and if you can go on the website, you can find out different things about what's there and where it's located. I'm not going to be that far away. God has not moved me from ministry. He's given a different direction so that his kingdom, for his kingdom is at hand. And I pray that as God desires it in heaven, that he has it here on earth. And so there's people that will not be a part of this body that God is asking myself and a group of others to reach out and to grab and let God's Spirit lead us in touching their lives and let God's Spirit making changes. And that's what I'll be doing and that's what it's about. So I'm going to say thank you for uh, this time together that we've been, I've been blessed. I know that God's faithful to my family. He's been faithful to me. And I know God is faithful to you and the servants that are here and leaders and those that are volunteering. So, Lonnie, would you like to close out the service, please? You can't have any cake, though. It was good cake. Well, you know, the writer of Ecclesiastes said, there's a time for everything, 
and a season for every activity, didn't he? Well, as you know, or maybe you didn't know, this was Ron Kleppel's last sermon as a senior minister here at the West Lansing Church of Christ. That doesn't mean we might be able to get him back sometime to preach once in a while. We don't know, but God has a mind. But Ron's on a new adventure now. He's on mission with God, and uh, God is using him. We're on an adventure with God right now, and we're on mission with him in our church as now we uh, continue our activities. There'll be a, a time, there's going to be a time without a senior minister, but that's okay. We can, we can, we've done that before. Uh, but we look forward for God bringing us in a new senior minister uh, to work with us in all that we do here. So I'm just praying for God that everybody here uh, will be praying about that and will use whatever gifts and talents get, that God has given you and bring them forth. Uh, to this congregation here uh, as we move forward through this time. On February 19th, after the worship service, we're going to have a time of uh, recognizing Ron and Cindy for the 17 years they poured out to us in our, in our congregation. So put that on your calendar. Uh, try to be here if you can. So this time, let me close our service with prayer. Father God, we're so thankful for you because you have always provided for us. You provided us Ron and Cindy Kleppel when we needed it. And for 17 years, Father, they have preached and they have shown us uh, your love and has uh, blessed our church. And now uh, they're going in on a new uh, adventure, uh, doing the same thing, uh, but in a different way. Father, I pray that you will bless this congregation right now, Lord, that we will continue on strong, faithful, and doing all things in love, which binds them all together in what makes them count for you. So dismiss us now from this service and be with us and guide and direct us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.